Good tidings, you beautiful individuals. We are back after a minor hiatus, which means we got a lot of backlog, off-season rumors, <laughs> roster changes to get through, mostly from the LPL because obviously they've been the quietest up to this point. They're the region playing catch-up with everybody else. The LCS, LEC, we got our early starts on the rumors and on getting everything in place, of course, with an early exit from the World Championship. The LPL, LCK, different stories. LCK, though, got up to it rapid speed with those off-season rumors. A little bit of time for the LPL to simmer, bring that hot pot to a boil. But we've certainly got a couple of these rumors laid down that we got to talk about. Obviously, the biggest ones are to do with the two biggest teams in JDG and BLG. And for some reason, the careers of Knight and Yagao are going to be forever linked. First, Knight comes, takes his job on JDG. And now we're seeing BLG and JDG got a little handshake deal going on because now the guys are swapping back with Knight probably going to BLG and Yagao coming back to JDG. There's got to be some cosmic force at work here of combining these two players' stories and their careers. They must have been at the same restaurant and then like had a fortune cookie and then they both dropped it and then they picked up the other guy's cookie and then it's it's oh, they've been linked ever since. Sounds That's like a great way. movie. I, I'm here for it. I'm, I'm ready to pitch it to the Riot executives anytime. But this story of Yagao and Knight and how they've done this, this is at least the second time that we have seen them swip swap places in organizations and both times i think you can look at it from both sides of it and say yeah this is a win this is good this is the type of change these positive qualities that this guy brings that this guy doesn't have are the things that we think is going to be that spark that pushes us to that next tier or gets us over that hurdle that denied us the last time so now you're looking i feel like even with the swap these are you're probably top two teams coming into the lpl you look the blg side of things first all they did was bring in Knight for Yagao, which after seeing 2023 as a whole, you would probably say that specifically is an upgrade. But now Bin, Jun, On, uh, and Elk all returning. A solo lane combo of Bin and Knight? Ooh. That is lethal in the LPL, man. This is certainly a bit of a change of pace for a squad like BLG, and that's going to happen when you're swip swapping players like Knight and Yagao. This changeup for BLG kind of is that doubling on the coin of saying, you know what, it was good to have that utility of a player like Yagao, but with a threat like Bin, with a player like Elk that can clean it up and have that damage, if we've got another option that you're worried about, the one that maybe takes away some of the attention that people are able to pour and focus into shutting down Bin, oh boy, we got a lot of monsters that we can take down and into your base to get that Nexus. And it's, it's not gloom or doom by any means for JDG because Kanavi and Ruler, the big re-signings in the offseason, also bringing Missing back. We knew they wouldn't be able to keep this star-studded Golden Road roster together. Knight, as we mentioned, out. Yagao comes in to replace him, who still had a really good 2023 for BLG. The only question mark now on this new rumored JDG roster is that top lane. We've seen Flandre be linked to that spot, which is obviously a bit of a surprise because the dude didn't play at all last year. Yeah, and I think the last taste that we did have of Flandre in our mouth was not necessarily the most impressive or the best level that we have seen from him individually. Of course, you go back to the dominant year for EDG, that world championship run. He is a relatively big part of why that gets done, why that gets accomplished for the team. So this is certainly a player that can step into a big organization, step into a, a, a team with big dreams for themselves for the next year and, and contribute. It is still that question mark because of that gap in time that we are seeing here and knowing just how much of a threat you got to be to be able to even survive the top lane environment in the LPL. blondre has got his work cut out for him. I think this JDG roster, though, you have to look at it and understand that keeping Kanabi, keeping Ruler had to be the bigger picture points that you need to keep to keep this type of mentality, this type of form of JDG around. And you might then shop for a mid laner, which obviously you find a pretty easy trading partner here and getting your gal to come over. And absolutely still going to be one of the premier teams in the LPL with that question mark top lane. 
especially when the other contenders are lining up bin on the top side and 369 was a featured guy a top laner that you could play through throughout all of 2023 they didn't have to a ton because they had knight and ruler but now his return back to top esports has been rumored for 369 reunited with jackie love reunited with tien and the spicy move for tes rookie looks to be out and they're taking a shot at cream in the mid lane and this is a guy we've hyped up split in and split out on that omg roster really excited to see if this dude can take it to the next level on a new squad and i think quickly to mention on rookie certainly a, a veteran player that i still think can contribute still can play at a very high level that being said i love this roll of the dice from top esports and that roll of the dice is not on mr 369 i think that is about as solid as it's going to get as far as an upgrade and consistency upgrade for this top esports team because you certainly were not getting any of what 369 is going to provide from both or you know either one take your pick wayward or ching tang last year for top esports this change to cream in the mid lane is a big one and this is absolutely a step up for cream in his career, not only in the players that he's going to be playing with, but with the pressure and attention that now is going to come with it, with this top esports role and what you can do and how you can take it to the next level individually and what that means for top esports. I think that is that bet that Cream starts to continue that development into a premier domestic player in the LPL could be it here with top esports and the question will be how does he do with expectations because omg was that proverbial dark horse team maybe they could make a deep run but i mean 369 jackie love even a guy like tian you got expectations now on this roster and when you look at support i've seen pp god as the main rumor coming over to jackie love we saw ming for a little bit but i feel like he might still be stuck in rng contract jail yeah, and I, I would love to see PP God make this move over to top esports. I think that that is one of those combos in the bottom lane that I think he is one of the very few that could get some type of synergy, some type of communication through with Jackie Love to control it, rein it in just at the right moments is one of the biggest things that you look at as a support in that type of system. The other thing, of course, in the LPL is roaming around, helping set things up, and that is going to be a big part of what top esports wants a player like pp god to take control of last little lpl rumor we've seen way way probably going to lng to replace tarzan and haven't seen tarzan link to any other teams really uh if he gets let go from lng which is just you have a bad series at worlds and all of a sudden you're out of a league uh, that is bonkers, my man, to see Tarzan fall out of this situation in the LPL. Because, yes, it was a bad series. But there's no mistaking that you're not even playing in that series, never mind making it to Worlds, without Tarzan's contributions and how he was able to play, what he has brought off the rift to this team. There is no question in my mind that this is a player that has been done wrong, not getting an opportunity, not getting a spot so far at this situation because he certainly is a top-tier talent. That being said, Weiwei joining this LNG squad is still a very strong player, still someone that can provide what this LNG team is going to need. It's going to be a little bit different, definitely where these threats are coming from, where that pressure, where these resources are heading towards without someone like Tarzan in, in relative control of that for that team in the position. If that's the only change LNG makes, though, still feel like they're a legit contender, especially with the little change-ups for BLG and JDG heading into 2024. Another big-name jungler on the move. It was the guy who had a resurgent, dominant year. One of the best junglers in the LCK, KT Cuz. Budget cuts mean they couldn't bring your boy Cuz back. He's headed to the Kwang Dong Freaks with a bunch of young guns. I know it's a bit of a surprise because it seemed like Young Jay was really being groomed to be that starting jungler. I have no idea what the splits are going to look like between him and Cuz, but I feel like both of them are going to be getting opportunities. Uh, you know, my initial, my knee-jerk reaction to this was I hated it because I felt so bad for your boy Cuz, the job that he had done and how fantastic he was for KT Rolster this whole this whole last year, specifically in that good summer split, to get rewarded with a downgrade by a lot of people's eyes going down towards the Kwangdong Freaks was not what I had in the cards 
but maybe as you've laid out, could be the long-term success here for someone like Cuz, because I think with this young roster that is on one of those upward trajectories in the LCK, specifically a player like Bulldog in the mid lane, love seeing him and what he's gonna be able to do in this next year. But as you mentioned, splitting that time, having a veteran for this team in the jungle could be a big boon, whether that is in game or outside a game. Off the riff is one of those things. Again, can't underestimate that type of value because of signing for this opportunity. I think this could work out. Initial reaction, not super pleased with this one from that Cuz perspective. But you look at it, you feel that type of momentum, the upward trend, he could play a big part of that role. And we've been talking for a year plus, it feels like three splits about the Guangdong Freaks ready to make that ascend to the top you know they became a playoff team in 2023 but with the massive shakeup of rosters in especially that three to six area of the lck even two to six if you want to throw in a squad like gen g this feels like the split and the opportunity for cb max and these young boys now with the veteran uh in cuz to really ascend and maybe even potentially be vying for top four in the lck in a crazy world, we could be there for the LCK. You're very right to call on the way that things are going to go, the way that this salary cap, the budget changes and sw swapping of players really is going to rotate where these positions are for these teams in the LCK. Leave it up for grabs. Leave it to that questionable unknown. And for a team like the Kwangdong Freaks that see themselves on that upward trend, this is the type of move that I see solidifying, bringing yourself an additional factor that can help yourself level up and rise up to that top spot we're heading into the new era it's not the tsm era it's the shopify rebellion getting confirmation for what this 2024 roster is going to look like fake god in the top lane boogie and insanity returning as that jungle mid duo b-boy coming over as the starting ad carry except wild turtle's gonna be a sub and then zazel coming into support you also have tomio as a support jungler the two subs very well might be starting at some point in the split tomio i mean you could have three fifths of disguised toast challengers team starting in the lcs Oh, don't tempt me. Don't tempt me with something like that, that I want to see the disguised toast guys find that success on the big stage. Shopify Rebellion with this roster. I think there's a lot of things to discuss with this one. And the first one has got to be, of course, looking at Bevoy and what we're expecting from him. Unfortunately for me, the read that I've got in this situation is it almost feels like a repeat of last year. TSM Ruby stepping into a situation where... Sure, I guess I could be completely wrong here, and I'm willing to see that proven. We've, not, we've I've seen that proven many times here watching League of Legends. But for for Bavoy to pop off, I don't see that happening in this situation. And I do see a player in Wild Turtle, which all the whatever jokes you want to be saying is still able to contribute at the very least at somewhat of an LCS tier level and able to get the job done. We saw that last year. I see no reason why not to expect that we could be seeing that type of change at that position for this team. Two, three weeks into the split. 2023 was honestly one of Wild Turtle's best years that he's had in a few years now. And of course, this guy's been around approaching 10 years, uh, over 10 years now in the competitive scene. So yeah, the B-Boy signing, obviously we know the head coach Revan used to work with him in the CB Law, so it feels like there's just that built-in relationship. He's got faith in him, and maybe the rest of the organization says, okay, but we're going to have Wild Turtle just in case things don't work out with him. But Boogie and Insanity were the highlights of last year's TSM team alongside Chime, but I'm very excited to see both Zazel and Fake God come back into the LCS. I know people are looking at this roster and saying, ah, that's ninth, 10th place, even though there aren't nine or 10 teams. So seventh or eighth place. But I mean, this team, it did all that you wanted in terms of bringing back the good parts of TSM. They they could maybe be fifth, sixth. I, I, I For me, I'm hard to find a, a part where I'm going to really fault this roster. The only one is looking at that B-Boy one, and then you can somewhat understand it and justify it maybe you think you know in a situation not you know and this is not one of those ones where it's oh i'm just bringing my boy because he's my he's my homie i want him it's not like that it's one of those situations where maybe revan is thinking i know this guy i can communicate with him on a way that other coaches 
aren't able to get through to him. I know I can get the maximum from this guy. There's still more to... I'm willing to buy into that one and see it, and, and, and I'll see it and believe it type of situation on the Rift. If you're not seeing it, though, someone like Wild Turtles waiting in the wings is a good option for the Shopify Rebellion team. And as you said, you're bringing back Insanity, you're bringing back Boogie. You asked anybody looking at TSM last year, those were the important parts that you would be upset if they weren't returning to the LCS. If those two subs do come in, you got a full NA lineup, which is becoming more and more common as the budget cuts come in for 2024. But we'll see uh, what kind of a splash the Rebellion can make in their first ever split in the LCS. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beautiful people. As always, thank you so much for watching, and we will catch you on that flippity flip.